In this video, we're going to learn how to find the square root of an integer modulo a prime p with the Tonelli-Shanks algorithm. So let's begin by just reviewing what a quadratic residue of a prime is. So in this talk, p is going to be an odd prime. We won't bother talking about p equals two. For an odd prime p, we'll just let fp be the finite field of p elements. So we can just realize that as the integers from zero to p minus one. And whenever we write an equation, we're already, always working in fp. So we regard all of our equalities as being mod p. So a very important definition here is the an element of fp is a quadratic residue an element n of fp is a quadratic residue of p if there's some element x in fp such that the square of x is equal to n and in other words uh, n has a square root in fp there is an element such that when you square it you get n and that's sometimes true and it's sometimes not true when n is equal to zero we get the equation x squared equals zero, and obviously that has a solution of x equals zero, and that in fact is the only solution. So by our definition, zero is a quadratic residue. It's kind of trivial that zero is a quadratic residue, so it's not as interesting as when we think about the non-zero elements of FP, which are quadratic residues or not. And it turns out that half are residues, and ha half are quadratic residues, and half are not quadratic residues which if you think about it just means there's p minus one over two of each remember p is odd so p minus one is even so p minus one is definitely divisible by two so p minus one over two makes sense and so does the expression p plus one over two for the same reason so another way to phrase that is if we include zero as part of our quadratic residues then there's p plus one over two quadratic residues and there's p minus one over two elements or numbers that are not quadratic residues in fp and if you have a, a number n which is a quadratic residue and it's non-zero then there's two two values of x which satisfied satisfy x squared equals n and when we say x squared equals n we here's what i mean we impl we implicitly assume we're working mod p and if we happen to know one solution let's say a so we know a squared is equal to n then we can easily get the other solution is just p minus a the challenging part is how do you get that first solution once you know one solution it's easy to get the other solution so there's actually a really nice test available to know if a given number n is a quadratic residue or not and that's called euler's criterion and if we introduce a little symbol here called a legendre symbol it's n to the power of p minus 1 over 2. p minus 1 is even, so like we talked about, p minus 1 over 2 is a well-defined whole number. And it's n to the power of that inside fp. So that's some element of fp. And it's, here's a little theorem. It's interesting that there's only three possible values for this Legendre symbol. It's either minus 1, 0, or 1, no matter what. And we just use minus one to represent P minus one. It's the same thing. It's just a little bit more convenient because it's a little bit shorter and cleaner. So minus one means P minus one. And here's how it all breaks down. When the Legendre symbol is zero, that just means N is zero. And as we know, that trivially means that's a quadratic residue. That's actually not a very interesting case. The interesting case is when the Legendre symbol is either one or minus one which happens really for all elements of FP except for zero. And in the case when the Legendre symbol is one, it's a quadratic residue and it's non-zero as well. And when the Legendre symbol is negative one, it's not a quadratic residue. So basically one means quadratic residue and negative one means it's not a quadratic residue. And when in Python, we can easily calculate powers like this. Even if P is a very large number, 
we can calculate modular exponentiation very easily in Python. So we'll see that. And so the Legendre symbol is very easy to calculate even for large primes. All right, now we're dealing with an odd prime P and that means P is either congruent to one or three mod four. In the case that P is congruent to three mod four, finding a solution to X squared equals N, in other words, finding a square root of N is actually easy because there is a direct formula we can use. So if we're given a prime P, which is congruent to three mod four, and we're given an N that we know is a quadratic residue, a non-zero one, then we can get a solution to X squared equals N directly. X is just N to the power of P plus one over four. And the reason P plus one over four is well-defined is because P is congruent to three mod four, right? P plus one is congruent to zero mod four, so it's divisible by four. And we can easily prove this. Uh, since uh, N is a non-zero quadratic residue by Euler's criteria, we know that P minus N to the P minus one over two is one. And so if we calculate X squared, then X squared is just P plus one over two. And we can break that up as N times N times P minus one over two. And then that expression N to the power of P minus one over two is one by Euler's criteria. And we get N times one, which is N. So X squared equals N. And we found the square root. And which means the case of P congruent to three, we know how to find square roots of any integer n that's a quadratic residue in that case. But then the question remains when p is congruent to one mod four, how do we find the square root in that case? So there is an algorithm, uh, Tonelli Shanks, that we can use here. And what it does, it's, it's a fast way to compute the square root in n. Now we just talked about how the case p congruent to three mod four can be handled directly. But the Tonelli Shanks algorithm works no matter what, even if it, the prime is congruent to one or three mod four, it doesn't matter. Uh, any odd prime works for this algorithm. And this algorithm is described on the Wikipedia page here. And in this video, we're actually not going to explain why this algorithm works, but we are going to implement it in Python just by following the wiki article there. Maybe in the future, we could do a video explaining why it works from a theoretical standpoint. Just to look at the article here, Tonelli Shanks algorithm. We see it right here. Here's the web address. And we'll go through it when we implement it in Python. And then to end the talk, we'll just show a little application of where this is this can be used. We can use this to find points on an elliptic curve. If we're given an elliptic curve, y squared equals x cubed plus ax plus b over fp. Let's say we make up a random X value. We plug it in. We plug it into X cubed plus AX plus B and we'll call the result N. Now, if there's a point on the elliptic curve with that X value, to find the corresponding Y value, we need to solve Y squared equals N in FP. And that's exactly the problem we're talking about right now. We're talking about how do you find the square root of N? And for this solution to exist, N has to be a quadratic residue. We can easily test that by Euler's criteria. If Euler criteria, Euler's criteria tells us that N is not a quadratic residue, then there's no point on the elliptic curve with that X value. But if X, uh, sorry, if N is a quadratic residue, then we can find a Y value by the Tonelli Shanks algorithm, and we will get an actual point on the elliptic curve with the specified X value that was chosen. So we'll see that at the end. All right, so let's begin to implement this. The first thing we should do is just to write a little function that resembles Euler's criteria. It's just a little test to determine if uh, a given value n is a quadratic, quadratic residue or not. And so why don't we call that method is quadratic residue. It'll take in the parameters n and p. If n is divisible by p, then n is, like zero in FP, right? And so zero is a quadratic residue and we just return true. That's kind of a trivial case. So as long as that's not true, then we can proceed and N is co-prime to P then, and we can use Euler's criteria. We calculate N to the power of P minus one over two mod P. That's that POW function there. 
the notice the double slash there that's like a floor division there so we get an integer back and we're just really saying if the other criteria value is equal to one then we have a quadratic residue if it's not equal to one which really means it's minus one or p minus one then it's a not a quadratic residue so that's our version of Euler's criteria so let's begin to write the tonelli shanks algorithm and it'll take two parameters p and n the p is our odd prime that we're working with and n is some integer that we would like to find the mod p square root of now why don't we just dispense of the trivial case where n is divisible by p then yes it has a square root the square root of zero is zero so we'll just return zero in that case so that's uh, from now on in the rest of the function we can assume that n is co-prime to p which just means it's not divisible by p. And um, why don't, actually, why don't we just change the order? Instead of pn, let's change the order of the parameters to np. Now we can use Euler's criteria to tell if n is a quadratic residue or not. If n is not a quadratic residue, then we might as well stop. There's, no, there's nothing else to do. So if we don't have a quadratic residue, then just print, you know, it's, this is value of n is not a quadratic residue and just return none. Otherwise we do have a quadratic residue and our task for this video is to, instead of just knowing that theoretically that it exists, that there's some number X who squares n, the goal of this video is actually to write some code that is going to find that number within a reasonable amount of time too, because we want to use large primes. And we can't write a, a brute force search to find it. We need algorithms to hone in on the number that we're looking for. In this case, the square root, right? So we know that we have a quadratic residue n. And in the case that p is congruent to 3 mod 4, we don't really need a special Tonelli-Shanks algorithm. We can just return n to the power of p plus 1 over 4, and we'll have a square root right there and be done with it. So let's code that up. Now, like I said, the Tonelli Shanks Shank algorithm works for primes congruent to three mod four, just as well as primes congruent to one mod four, but returning this power n to the p plus one over four is definitely faster. So let's do it that way. All right, so at this point in the code, p is congruent to one mod four, but like I'm saying, it doesn't matter. So now we're basically following the wiki article here just following the steps our first step is to take the number p minus one which is even pull out all, all the powers of two we can so we'll write it as two to the power of s and then we'll have a number q right beside it which is odd so let's define q as p minus one and s to be zero just to initialize those variables and we'll just do a little while loop whenever q is divisible by two which will happen at least once uh, s is going to be incremented by one and Q will be divided by two and reset. And we'll just keep doing that until Q is no longer divisible by two and then it'll be odd. I didn't write Q is odd in my comment there, I should have. And then we'll just print Q and print S out. After these, these print statements I'm gonna write are just for debugging. If you wanna erase them after, you probably, probably should. And if we look at the next part of the wiki article, we need to find a quadratic non-residue, z. And remember that half of the numbers in fp, the non-zero numbers are residues, half are non-residues. So just doing a brute force search for a quadratic non-residue is going to be fast. Uh, it's going to happen pretty quickly. So we'll just initialize z to be 2. Um, we'll test if it's quadratic residue. If it is, we're going to increment by one and we're just going to keep going like that until we come upon a number Z, which is not a quadratic residue. And that'll help us with the calculations later. And we'll just print that Z out for debugging. And now we have some variables that are going to appear in a loop, but first we need to initialize them. And we're just uh, following the wiki article there, according to all the formulas given there. Like I said, we're not explaining why this works. That would be a good topic for a video, but let's just implement it and enjoy the results.
And after those initialization variables are set up, now comes the loop. And the loop is based on whether t is one or not. When uh, t is not equal to one, we have to remain in the loop and um, reset all of our variables that we're using here. So whenever we do a loop, why don't we just start off by printing loop? Our first step is to calculate i. What is i? i is the least power of two, such that t to the power of two to the i is equal to one. And the way we can calculate successive powers of two um, of t is just by squaring it repeatedly. And we need to introduce a temporary variable for that so we don't wreck the current value of t. And I just call that temp. So while the temp is not equal to one, we increment i and we do temp equals temp times temp mod p. And that resembles t to the power of two to the i. And we keep going until we get it to be equal to one. So then we have uh, to define these next five variables, B, M, C, T, and R. And I just do a little helper, helper variable here. Power of two is two to the power of M minus I minus one. And then we follow the all the definitions in the wiki article there. B is C to the power of two mod P. M is just equal to I. C is B squared mod P. T is change to t times b times b mod p and r is r times b so and we're just going to print out all these values each time we loop that'll be for debugging and eventually we probably would want to get rid of all those print statements after we're happy that it works and uh, the nice thing is after we break out of that loop which will happen the value of r is the square root and we're done so that's very nice and that's the Tonelli Shanks algorithm giving us the square root of n mod p when it exists. We're done. So we should try to test this a little bit. They actually give us a little scenario here where we can try it out. We're going to take the same numbers as they have here. So we're going to try to find the square root of 5 mod 41. And when we run it, we see that we get all these intermediate values that they've talked about here. And that's good. Now, one thing I want to point out is that the prime that they use there is 41. And that's a prime that's congruent to 1 mod 4, which means that the Tonelli shanks algorithm is really needed there. What if we use the prime that's congruent to uh, congruent to three mod four? And remember, that's the case where we have a direct formula available. So let's try 43. 43 is congruent to three mod four. And when we try five there, as to trying to find the square root of five mod 43, it actually is not a quadratic residue. So Tonelli Shanks just says, sorry, it can't do anything. So why don't we change five to six? Maybe that'll work. And it does. So, and we get 36. So it's kind of interesting in F43, the field of 43 elements, the square root of six is 36, which is kind of opposite to what we think because we're used to thinking the square root of 36 is six. But that's just an odd fact in F43 that the square root of six is 36. So what does that mean that the square root of six is 36? Well. It should mean that if we do 36 times 36, we should get six, right? So why don't we do 36 times 36 mod 43 and see if we get the number six and we do, good. And I think that that kind of convinces us a little bit that the algorithm works. So we see that for a prime that's congruent to three mod four, none of the code is really executed because we just get the answer right away through that formula of P plus one over four n to the power of p plus 1 over 4. But when p is congruent to 1 mod 4, uh, then we go through all those steps. And let's try to write a little formula, or let's try to do a little application of this to elliptic curves. Let's say we have an elliptic curve that's defined by the parameters, the odd prime p and a and b. So if you're given an elliptic curve like that, and you make up a value of x, 
is it possible to find the value of y such that x comma y is on the curve? Let's try to write a function which does that for us. Let's define n to be x cubed plus ax plus b mod p for some given value of x, it doesn't matter. And we would like to know if we can find the value of y such that y squared equals n. Because if we could do that, x comma y would be on the elliptic curve. And to be able to solve y squared equals n, that's exactly what we've been talked about. We want what we've been talking about. It's basically finding the square root of n. And that's what the tonelli shanks uh, function algorithm does for us. Now, it's possible that n is not a quadratic residue. And that means the tonelli shanks function we wrote will return none. But in some cases, uh, when n is a quadratic residue, it will give us the value of y such that x, y is on the elliptic curve. Now to test this out, why don't we take a look at two different elliptic curves, um, P192 and P224. We see the parameters here. There's a is actually equal to negative three. So P is that big prime number, a is negative three. Of course, that just means it's a is three less than that big prime up there. So this big prime ends in a nine. So P A would end the same digits, except it would end in a six. And then B is in hex. So let's convert that to a, a, an integer. And why don't we make up a value of X and see if there's a point on this elliptic curve P192 with the X value of say 2020, the current year, just a random number. So when we run this function, we see that this function is not a quadratic residue. So what that means that there is no point on this elliptic curve P192 with an X value of 2020. So why don't we change the X value to something else, maybe 2021. And then when we run it, we see that, yeah, we get a point on the elliptic curve with an X value of 2021. And Y is this big number here. And that point is actually on the curve. We can actually prove that by calculating y squared minus x cubed plus ax plus b mod p and making sure we get zero, and we do. So that's cool. We can make up points on elliptic curves. Now, one thing to notice on this one is that there was no printout of the tonelli shanks algorithm, which means this prime is actually congruent to three, uh, uh, yeah, congruent to three mod four. So it's actually not a very interesting case. We, ha we didn't actually even use the Tinelli-Shanks algorithm just now. We just calculated n to the power of p plus 1 over 4. So let's change the elliptic curve now to p224, because I happen to know that curve, the prime, is congruent to 1 mod 4, so that we really do need the Tinelli-Shanks algorithm here. So the a value is still minus 3. It's actually a different a value, right, because the prime changed, so a changed as well. Uh, B changes as well to this new hex number. And why don't we go back to 2020? When we run that, again, we see that 2020 is not a uh, quadratic residue. It gives us a little error there because we're trying to do some calculations with the none value. So no surprise that's an error. But why don't we change this to uh, 2021? And when we do this, look at that. We get the point. We get the Y value of the point. We get zero, so it really is on the curve. And the big takeaway here is that it was fast, right? We're using huge prime numbers and we get the square root very quickly on a little home computer. So this is awesome. If we tried to write a for loop to brute force the value of the square root of 2021, it would just take forever. We wouldn't, it wouldn't work, right? So that's the, that's the nice thing about this algorithm is that you can find square roots using very large primes and the square and the algorithm performance is very quick. All right. So that's all I wanted to talk about in this video.